Hello, Twinkle here. So I've gone to this rather popular Pokemon Fusion website, and I've clicked the random button a number of times, and I'm going to pick my two favorites and make pixel art sprites of them. Now when I say pixel art sprites, I'm not totally mimicking the art style of Pokemon sprites. Uh, these are formulated more around fitting into my own animations, but um, theoretically, these could be used in a ROM hack or something. Okay, so the first fusion I'm doing is Glalie plus Deoxys. I saw a lot of potential here because they both have this kind of layered, segmented look to their bodies. And the way it's put Glalie's face over Deoxys' body I think looks really cool, even though when I translate it to pixel art, there's no way that level of facial detail is going to transfer. Even with pixel art, I like to start my drawing process traditional style with pencil and paper. Here are some of my sketches. You can see where I got the torso and face nailed down pretty quickly, but I really had to do quite a bit of experimentation to get the hips and legs to a point that I like. Here's a second sketch page where I have put together the details that I like best, simplified some things so that they'll work on a small canvas, and formulated a pose that I think makes sense and shows off the design. Generally speaking, I took details and sort of stylizations from Glalie and applied them over Deoxys's sort of basic body shape. Uh, honestly, the result looks a bit like an angry humanoid golf ball. I added Glalie's horns throughout the design as a sort of reoccurring motif, and I also exaggerated some of the pre-existing points on Deoxys. Uh, I took everything and made it a little triangular, skinnier, pointier to keep uh, consistent shape language going. I primarily based this on the normal form of Deoxys, but, but I took some cues from the attack form as well, mostly with the triple head spikes. I didn't want this to like just be like a fusion because like if you try to put fusions into the context of the world of Pokemon it doesn't necessarily make that much sense. So I wanted it to look like something that could like exist within the Pokemon world along with the ones it's made from. And so like I interpreted this as a sort of alternate variation of Deoxys similar in spirit to uh, regional variants just except that it's from deep outer space, and not from a different continent. Deoxys is for sure my favorite mythical Pokemon. I love how alien and robotic it looks like. The design just gets that from outer space thing across very well. I'm very pleased with how much of the robotic look is coming through in this. I think I emphasized it and made it look even more robotic. I just love the concept of a creature that, whose physiology is so alien and different from our own that, it, that our brains register it as being more like a machine than a living thing, kind of like the Heralds or Vylons from Yu-Gi-Oh. I've even made characters of my own following this sort of design philosophy. I've decided to go with Deoxys Comet Ice Adaptation as the name, Deoxys C for short. It's an ice psychic type with the ability Ice Body. Stat-wise, it's slower than base Deoxys with an emphasis on physical over special stats to emphasize how hard it is. It would still transform, theoretically, with its other forms continuing this trend. Maybe I could do another video where I designed attack, defense, and speed forms for Comet Deoxys. The Pokédex entry. This variation of Deoxys is specially adapted to living in the deepest, coldest vacuums of outer space. Its body has become hard and ice-like. 
Anything that touches its frigid form is immediately frozen solid. The blunt spikes at the ends of its arms are used for crushing meteors and comets, from which it collects vital nutrients. The second fusion for today's video will be Dusko plus Pyloswine. Definitely kind of odd looking. It's pretty much about as awkward as you would think this would be, but for some reason something about it just inexplicably works. Here is my first set of sketches for Duskull and Pyloswine. I messed around with the blobby body shape quite a bit. Uh, none of these are quite hitting that point that I wanted them to. I also messed around with the appearance of the skull mask and how I would work the Pyloswine tusks into it. Here's sketch page number two. I followed the sort of loafy shape of Pyloswine, but I stretched it out vertically and kind of did this wispy lower body thing. Took some cues here from Cursula and also from the giant mech in um, Soul Eater, <laughs> if you've seen that anime. <laughs> Starting in on the pixel art process. A little peculiar, this actually ended up more complex than originally planned. Particularly at the base, I added some wispy tentacles that I think look really good. It's a little reminiscent of Hyasuian Zoroark. The arms were a little problematic. I initially wanted to have it sort of hugging itself, as the original sketch had it, but it just didn't quite look right. So I have them just kind of playfully hanging down in the front. Those arms were originally Mamo Swine's ears. Mamo Swine, Pilo Swine. If you don't think I brought any Pilo Swine into this Pilo Swine fusion, then you thought wrong, fool. I ended up moving the face skull thing over to the side. I thought it looked more mischievous that way and more ghostly, like it's planning something nefarious or just hilarious. <laughs> I tried quite a few different colors for this one. I really liked the white that the fusion generator had. I have no idea why it chose that color or where that came from, but it looked really good. So I kept that in place. And so that we don't just have a big blob of white, I added some red tips. This really drives home the comparison to Hyosuian Zoronk. So that's cool. Shading on white is always an interesting challenge because it gradiented right into the red so I couldn't shade the red and white totally separately. Ultimately, I had to go back to the flat color layer and darken it a little bit. Wisp Skull, the Wisp Pokemon. This Pokemon's smoke-like body is full of concentrated fire, which it releases through its eyes and hands as potent attacks. It appears to delight in tormenting its prey, emitting a high-pitched laughter-like sound while hunting. Wisp Skull makes its home in dense brush surrounding murky swamps. I carried over the theme of Will-O-Wisps that Duskull and Dusklops already have going on. How I contextualize this Pokemon is as an alternative evolution from Duskull. I'm not entirely sure how it would evolve. Maybe with an item or through friendship or something. Whereas Dusclops is a little more vague in its intentions, I made this a little more outright nefarious. I made it a ghost fire type with the ability Cursed Body or Flash Fire as a hidden ability. Stat-wise, I wanted to keep it around on par with Dusclops. I may possibly create an evolved form for this at some point in the future to be in line with Dusk Noir. For the shiny, I thought the next best looking scheme would be to just shift everything blue. So between the two of them, we now have red, white, and blue. So yeah, Murica. You sweet. <laughs> 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 <laughs>